Who was Paul Simon of Illinois? He was a crime-fighting newspaper publisher, a progressive state lawmaker and lieutenant governor, the author of more than 20 books, Illinois congressman and United States senator, Democratic presidential candidate in 1988, founder of the SIU Public Policy Institute, college professor, and voice of conscience. No landmark piece of legislation bears his name. In 40 years of elected office, he never chaired more than a subcommittee in Springfield or Capitol Hill. Yet he was one of the most influential politicians the state of Illinois has ever produced. The son of Lutheran missionaries, Paul Simon was born on Thanksgiving Day in 1928 in Eugene, Oregon. My parents clearly instilled in me a, a sense of what life is all about and that you're here not just to live and pile up money or fame or whatever for yourself. You're here to serve others. As the 19-year-old publisher of the Troy Tribune, Simon bravely fought public corruption in the Metro East area of Illinois near St. Louis. I contacted the governor of Illinois, uh, Governor Adlai Stevenson, and urged him to use the state police. The state police had never been used for anything other than traffic offenses. And I argued that they ought to be used to close down this big gambling, illegal gambling operation in our county. And uh, Governor Stevenson, uh, to his great credit, uh, on one May day in 1950, I think it was, uh, had 51 state police uh, swoop down on, on two of the big uh, operations, and, uh, and our county was never the same after that. Elected to the Illinois House of Representatives at age 25, Simon was a progressive voice. His first bill was the state's first Open Meetings Act. The Springfield years were crucial to Paul Simon's development as a public intellectual and statesman. While there, he cultivated friendships with national leaders like the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. While in Springfield, he wrote the first of more than 20 books, including a highly regarded account of Abraham Lincoln's service in the Illinois General Assembly. The state lawmaker traveled to over 100 countries around the world to learn firsthand about international problems, including his own fact-finding tour of South Vietnam. Simon continued to fight corruption in the state capitol, where many lawmakers routinely padded their pockets with bribes and kickbacks. Corruption was very open and blatant, uh, so much so that eventually uh, I uh, co-authored an article in Harper's Magazine called The Illinois Legislature Studying Corruption. Simon served four years as lieutenant governor of Illinois, but failed to win his party's primary for governor in 1972. He returned to elective office in 1974 as a member of Congress representing a district in southern Illinois. Simon's congressional record centered on education, helping children, and the less fortunate. He sponsored the nation's first Missing Children's Act. In all the years that I knew Paul Simon, he was always a champion for children to me. His priorities were always in order. He was a politician who cared about children first, crime victims, women, victims' rights. He was always the man that you could go to and say, I need help. Many people credit him to be the father of the missing children's movement. Socially progressive and fiscally conservative, Simon was elected to the United States Senate in 1984. Balancing the federal budget topped his domestic agenda while he pursued an internationalist course as a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, an outspoken critic of South Africa's apartheid system that brutally suppressed the rights of the country's black majority. He pushed hard for economic sanctions that eventually led to its downfall. Uh, South Africa is going to have change. It's going to come either peacefully it's going to, or it's going to come violently. The United States ought to be on the side of pushing for that peaceful change. Simon ran unsuccessfully for his party's presidential nomination in 1988, but easily won re-election to a second Senate term in 1990. Education issues like literacy and the Federal Student Loan Act dominated his second Senate term. I want everybody in this audience to know that more than anyone else in the United States Congress, he was instrumental in supporting our efforts 
to pass the direct loan program in 1993, and no one has done more to make the dream of a college education a reality for all American students than Paul Simon of Illinois. Simon retired from the Senate in 1997 to become the founding director of Southern Illinois University Carbondale's Public Policy Institute. This will give me an opportunity to continue to focus on the needs of my home region, as well as Illinois, the nation, and the international community. The Institute will seek the active involvement of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, and its goal will be public service, not partisan service. The Institute's first major accomplishment was passage of the first significant campaign finance reform legislation in more than 25 years at the Illinois State House. Essentially what we're trying to do is to prohibit gifts from a prohibited source, and a prohibited source would uh, include lobbyists or people who stand to benefit uh, from government action. It essentially bars solicitation and acceptance of campaign contributions in the Capitol building, and it toughens and tightens and broadens disclosure requirements. Although Simon never earned a college degree, his journalism and political science classes were popular with students. The very first class I have, I ask, the, like the legislative process class, I ask them two questions. One, what kind of a world would you like to see? And second, what are you willing to do to achieve it? Paul Simon died at the age of 75 in December 2003. I want to have a record that my children and grandchildren can be proud of. But beyond that, uh, I don't think you should worry too much about um, plaques and, and statues and buildings being named for you and all those kinds of things. I think what you have to do is help people. And that's the kind of, uh, of living memorial that you really want.